So let's look at what one memory bit looks like in SRAM and DRAM technology. The bit sits at the intersection of a word line that passes by many bits and a bit line that also passes by many bits. So a memory is a matrix of cells like this. And DRAM will also have a word line and a bit line. What the word line does is it controls a transistor here that can open or close itself to connect the cell to the bit line. So the idea is that if we want to access this cell, we activate this word line, which opens this transistor, and now the memory cell is connected to the bit line. So if we want to write data, we put the bit line at the value we want, and the cell gets that value. If we want to read the data, we let go of the bit lines, and then the cell here will get a new value on the bit line so we can sense what it is. In SRAM, the actual memory cell consists of two inverters. Each inverter has two transistors, that's how you build an inverter. And the idea is that if this is 1 here, then this inverter flips it and outputs a 0 here. This other inverter flips that and outputs 1 here. So once we disconnect this transistor, this cell will keep its value. It's going to maintain a 0 here because that 0 is inverted and output as a 1 here, which amplifies this 0 here. So we have a feedback loop here that keeps the data that we want. So how do we write to this cell? So if we try to put a 1 here, this inverter here is working against us because it sees a 1. It wants to output a 0. And the answer to that is that this transistor here connects this cell to the bit line. If we put a stronger 1 here, because these are small inverters, we can defeat them so that even though this inverter is trying to put a 0 here, we defeat it with a 1. And then what happens is, now that this is a 1, this inverter outputs a 0 here, this inverter now starts outputting a 1, and the cell becomes a 1. To make that easier, typically we have two of these transistors and two bit lines for the same cell that have the opposite values. So for this cell to become a 1, we put 1 here and 0 here. That puts a 1 here at the same time when we are putting a 0 here, so these are more easily defeated. When we want to read, we can connect both of them to the bit lines, and if we wrote a 1 here, we will have this one be 1, this one be 0. So this line really outputs the bit we want, and this one just outputs the opposite value of the bit we want. By looking at the difference between these bit lines, we can more quickly detect what the cell actually has. As we said, these are weak transistors here. So once we connect this cell to the bit lines, the bit line is long. And in order to, for example, raise the voltage on the bit line to a value that corresponds to 1, these transistors here are weak and cannot pull it to 1 very fast. They also will try to lower this one down to 0, and they may not be able to do that very fast. So at the other end here, where we're trying to detect what's in this cell, instead of looking at when will this cross a threshold between a 0 and a 1, what we look at is in what direction is the difference of these two going. We make them initially about halfway between 0 and 1. We then activate the word line. The cell now starts, let's say, pulling this one up and lowering this one down. If we look at what's the difference, very quickly we will detect that this one here, because it's drawn towards 1, is getting to be larger voltage than the voltage on this one. So we can now say that the cell had a 1 before it actually manages to pull this fully to 1 and lower this fully to 0.